Hey guys, welcome to my full interview with Mark Dukaskis, martial arts legend, been in a lot of great movies. Anyway, this video is going to be broken down into different chapters. Going to first talk about his journey into Capoeira and Only the Strong. Also how he built what, in my opinion, was his best body ever. Also going to talk about the future of Only the Strong, like a potential sequel, uh, fight choreography, and more. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, please help support the channel. Hit the like button, subscribe, share the video. And if you want more Only the Strong, of course, check out writer-director Sheldon Ledich's book from Vietnam to Van Damme, where there's a whole nice section on Only the Strong in here. Is that a real, that's a real cat, isn't it? Yeah, it's a real cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mark, a real honor to get you on the show. I've been a fan for a long time. Love the movies. And I know you're limited on time, so really just going to focus on Only the Strong. So, okay. Well, David, thank you for having me, though. I appreciate it. Of course, of course. So I'll share my little story of how I found out about the movie. It's kind of funny. And there's like a lot of fans out there that have their own stories, but this is mine. When I was 14 years old, I was in middle school, maybe ninth grade, and I was taking Taekwondo at the time, and I was just in love with blood sport, Jean-Claude Van Damme, all that. And there was a kid at school who told me, and he knew he was a big fan of blood sport and all these movies too. And he said, you know what? There's there's a new martial arts movie and it's better than Bloodsport. It's the best martial arts movie in the world. I was like, really? Wait, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Oh. And he said it was only the strong. <laughs> so I went to the video store. The next time I went to the video store, I found it. And the first time I played it, I was just blown away. Just the opening where we see like the guys doing Capoeira and then they kind of zoom into you. You're, you're like in your soldier outfit and then you look to the side and then you join those guys and just doing those aerials those flips like i never seen anything uh in a film like that before i was just so blown away and the thing huh. that i really liked about that film and one of the reasons why i like the john claude van damme films a lot is because you guys just aside from like fighting and all the violence in martial arts you guys just made it look so fun and so wow. joyous huh. and that's really you know why yeah. i like the martial arts so much yeah self-defense is one thing but Really, it's just, I just love it. I love training. That's why I do it. Not because I want to get in a fight with somebody, you know? But 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 following with that, I, I want to ask you um, something that Louis Esteban, our mutual friend, wanted me to uh, bring up. So going to the yes. beginning of the film. Oh, oh, oh. you think Louise, I'm, I'm always worried because um, you never know what he's going to say. Yeah, you never know. Uh, but, he, but he wanted you me to ask know. you, <laughs> beginning of the film, yes. shoot day one. Exterior Brazilian village yes. sequence, how Sheldon traumatized yes. Yes. you for life. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, uh, okay. I will answer that question or, or talk about that in a moment. But first, may I address, please, that I love the fact that, um, that the martial arts brings you joy and uh, makes you happy and gives you a good feeling because, you know, of course, martial arts the martial part you know you're learning how to fight and defend yourself and protect all great things but you also want to have um protection of your spirit and your mind uh, happy thoughts and positivity not just fighting you know and i think martial arts gives us that and especially capoeira you know you hear the music the, the practitioners are smiling, you get this flowing movement and the legs are flying and they're upside down and the bodies are flying. How can you not smile, you know? So it makes me really happy to hear that, 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 that the moves um, brought that to you as well. Yeah, and um, let's see, before I get to the first day of shooting with, uh, <laughs> with Sheldon and Louise, can I just tell you how I started Capoeira? Oh, please. Okay. So uh, let's see, I'm 16 years old. I, I, I was already living in Europe with my family and my close friend, Emmanuel Betancourt and I, uh, Emmanuel being one of my sparring partners since I was 13 years old, we came back to America because my mom was taking us on a tournament tour and we were gonna do forms and fighting and all these different tournaments in California. And we were staying at my uh, father's black belt school, uh, Bill Owens in, in Oakland, California, Sifu Bill. And Sifu Bill had just come back from Brazil and he had learned some capoeira. And so Sifu Bill had uh, my good friend Emmanuel and I uh, come out into the, you know, the school's um, uh, training area 
and wanted to show us some capoeira and you know he said he wanted to spar with us but he's going to use the capoeira style of course he starts that he puts some music on and he starts the jinga and you know, we're just light sparring and every time we throw a move he's just not there not only is he just not there laterally or, or back but he's down on the ground rolling around the whole lays and all these movements and I'd never seen anything like it before. So hearing the the the, the Brazilian the, the capoeira music and, and watching him do the movements, I was already smiling, you know, a lot, you know, trying to spar with him. So that was the first introduction to actually seeing capoeira back when I was 16. Mm -hmm. Now, cut to all of these years later, I had already done the movie American Samurai. And that time in my life, I just I felt like I needed something different. Just, I don't know what it was, but just something different in my life. And my good friend, uh, Sifu Earl, Earl White, another uh, sparring partner of, of mine since I was 16, um, another student of my mom and dad's, he, he said that he had this amazing, amazing capoeira teacher named Mestre Amen Santo in Santa Monica, California. Amen, can you come on over here? This is the, this is the real thing. This is our capoeira connection right here. This is, I'm in. Yeah. Now, I was living in Los Angeles. And Santa Monica is one of the areas in, um, in LA. And at, uh, at 27, I thought, you know, um, I need to investigate and explore this capoeira. I need to go see Mestre Amin. So um, I get the information from Earl. I drive up to the school. And at the time, the school was in this little hangar near the Santa, or at the Santa Monica airport. I get out of my car and I already heard that snare, 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 you know, the bit of bow, and I heard clapping and music and the, and the drums. And I walk in and I, I'm, I'm, I, I just remember a flash of white and these feet whoosh, flying all over the place. And I started smiling. Same thing like when you saw the movie, I started smiling and movements in it. And I asked if I could watch. He said, absolutely. And I, I watched. And, you know, after they were finished, Right after they were finished, I said, uh, what do I need to do to sign up and join? And that was, I think, sometime in November. And that is how I started Capoeira in November, just because of life changes and Sifu Bill Owens, Emmanuel, and then ultimately, you know, Earl White telling me, you got to go to this class. Mr. Amin's amazing. And uh, I talked to Mr. Amin. I started classes in November. And then happenstance, serendipity, uh, come January, Three or four months later, my manager calls me and says, hey, uh, there's, uh, there's some producers that want you to uh, come and meet with them. They're doing a movie about capoeira. Destiny. And so it wasn't that I got the movie and then start Destiny, yeah. I didn't, I didn't get the movie and then start capoeira classes. I started because of life. And then that, you know, serendipity, yes, came together. Ah, is that your cat? I love that. Oh yes, yes. And then um Mr. Ollie then, Nash, the furless, uh the furless feline. <laughs> there he is. Say out of Mark. <laughs> oh wow, beautiful cat. Oh thanks. Um but anyway, yeah, so you're welcome. So so it was life brought me and, and my friends brought me to Capoeira first, and then the movie came afterwards, you know. So there's a lot of stuff in between, but Going back to now the first day of filming Only the Strong. Um, so Louise brought this up, right? Oh, he wanted me to ask you. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. so I want to say, Sheldon, I apologize again. And you scolded me and I learned my lesson. <laughs> um, but uh, we, were, we were doing, I can't remember one of the first scenes. And we, we were started talking about what we were going to do that day. And Louise being the writer uh, uh, with, uh, you know, it was is based on his real life story. And then he and Sheldon working on the screenplay, he came up and, and I'm gonna blame, I'm gonna blame Louise, but Louise will blame me. So that's okay. Sure. So one of us had the idea of like, I think we need a, a word or two change, you know, in, 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 one, of the, in the, one of the opening, one of the scenes mm -hmm. and and then, and then it was like, okay, if we do, we, we, we both like the change. If we do the change, do we, do we tell Sheldon or do we just do it in the scene? And I'm going to blame Louise again, but he'll blame me. So it goes back and forth. Yeah, sure. So we decided that I would just do it. I would just do it without saying anything. And of course we, 
you know, on take one, I do the scene the way that Louise and I wanted to change it and, you know, finish the scene. And all I just remember is that um, Sheldon yelling cut. And then he said, Mark, I need to talk with you. <laughs> Sheldon brought me over and in the most professional, uh, you know, nicest way he could, basically he said, don't you ever do that again without telling me first. Wow. And I said, you're right, Sheldon. It's my fault. I apologize. I'm so sorry. It will never happen again. And it did not happen again. You know, so I, I, I took a spanking for both of us, Louise. <laughs> wow, that's funny. <sighs> you know, another thing, Mark, that yeah. was really impressive. It's a lesson learned, you know. Yeah, lesson learned. Yeah, uh, with the writer-director. Even though you were working with the co-writer, Louise, <laughs> But with the writer director, uh, don't change yes. the script. Basically, lesson for any actors out there. But no, no, not 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 without not without making sure it's okay. You know, so um, you know, ultimately, it, it it actually in the end, it was my fault because whether it was Louise's idea or not, <laughs> I obviously agreed with it, and I'm the one that has to do the dialogue. So ultimately, it was my call. So I take that back. It's 100 percent my fault. It is. I mean. I said it right. Louise is not saying it. He's the writer. So my bad. Let, let me so ask you Louise, this. I apologize. And Sheldon, I apologize again. <laughs> let me ask you this, Mark. So that again, that opening sequence, like I had mentioned earlier, was so amazing. A great way to open the movie. And you guys weren't out there that long. Like how long did it take to shoot that scene? As far as I remember, we shot it in just a few hours. You know, this is the thing. This is the great thing. Uh, so, David, uh, when we shot that, I had less. I had done less than a year of of capoeira. Once I got the movie, Mister Amen uh, would train me uh, with privates and in group classes. But I was still very much a beginner. But Mister Amen, of course, is uh, um, you know an expert, a master, and the people that that we had that he brought in to be the other capoeiristas, they were all very experienced, way more advanced than me. So they knew exactly what they were doing. And I was just kind of jumping in as my character was a soldier. And he obviously learned capoeira while he was on tour down in Brazil. So it made sense that, you know, he's trying to figure everything out and learn the best he could. And we tried to show the best we could in, in the, the minimal amount of time that I was very much, um, you know, Javier, his name was, Mr. Min's uh, name in the movie was Javier, that I was Javier's student. He was definitely my teacher and obviously way better. So, um, yeah, we shot that scene in, in a few hours. Um, we did not uh, choreograph that. That was off free flow. Wow. So we just went for it. You know, like I said, you know, Mr. Amen and the other capoeiristas, they knew exactly what they were doing. I was just trying to, you know, manage my way and not get killed. Yeah, know? sure. <laughs> Nobody could ever tell watching the film, though. I mean, you look like such an expert. But but as far as a character, having a mission out there in Brazil and then learning while he's there, uh, they, they did capture right, that because, right. you know, that sequence, like you could tell the Maestro Amen is obviously the superior, just the way it was shot and how expertly he moved. But again... You move so great, and yeah. even though you said you were doing Absolutely. halfway for like a year, the lifetime of martial arts plus the gymnastics background, like nobody could expect to do that in a year if they started Capoeira, but you had the gymnastics background and a lifetime of martial arts, so it seemed like you were able to adapt to that very quickly. Well, well thank you. Um, well, you know, the, the other thing is, too, it, it made sense for the character. I mean, if he was a, spe a special forces soldier, you know, obviously he, he was in, um, you know, physical shape and who knows in terms of his character, what kind of background he had. Maybe he had boxing, maybe he had other martial arts, you know, so it kind of, it, it kind of made sense that he was, um, that he knew how to fight, but that Capoeira was still something rather new for him as it was for me. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just love that, um, you know, Mr. Amen was my teacher in real life and, and Sheldon, and Louise and our producers um, were open to and supportive of him playing my teacher in the movie. It made sense. I mean, it, it really all fell together, you know? Yeah. He had a good screen presence and a good look, so that definitely helped too, <laughs> you know? Let me ask you this, Mark. So go, going back to the, uh, you know, the yeah. Special Forces Yo. character, he's in good shape. 
Now I know Sheldon, you know, kind of said, Hey, this, this is the nineties. These action guys are kind of like a little more muscular. Let's uh, let's start lifting weights, getting some muscle. So I really want to talk about, because I feel like you had such an amazing body. So not only did your martial arts inspire me when I was like in mm-hmm. middle school, going into high school, but your physique did as well. So let's talk about that. Oh, like how much you. did you, you weigh prior? To, <laughs> how much did you weigh prior to only the strong and how much did you end up weighing in the movie? Right. Uh, I am not exactly sure, but um, my guess is that whatever I was, uh, by the time we started shooting, I was eight to 10 pounds heavier with less body fat. About, about three weeks ago or so, we tested uh, Mark's body fat, and for his age and height, uh, it should have been like 12.6. Uh, his body fat was actually uh, 9.9%. Um, nine, eight, nine. Uh, eight, nine, 8. body fat. So we're way below, um, below what it should be. It's really, really nice and tight, really, really low fat. You know, oh, you and, were shredded. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I have to thank Ev Carillon. He was uh, one of the actors I worked with on um, Conan the Barbarian, the live show at Universal Studios. He had an amazing build. He played uh, big Conan. And, my, and me, when I was there, I played little Conan. I played Conan when he was 14. So Ev, um, uh, the producers, hired Ev to get me in, you know, more muscular shape. I'm Ev Carrion, and uh, right now I'm training Mark. I've been training him for the last um, six, three months or so, yeah. Seems to be coming along uh, very well. I, uh, I don't normally train people, uh, except for Mark, he's a very good friend of mine, and um, so I decided to, to train him as a favor he asked me. So he had me on, um, you know, a certain diet, and trained me six days a week. I, I worked out with him for 90, 90 minutes to uh, two hours, six days a week, and then I had uh, Mr. Amin in the afternoons and evenings. He's, uh, he trains us hard because whatever we do is a direct reflection of what he teaches, so this is it. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was very, uh, very, a very specific diet of putting on muscle while still being functional and flexible. Um, yeah, it was, it was intense. Hey, hey Mark, was that. it just cool. like yeah. a balanced diet where you had like a lot of like leaner proteins, complex carbs, fruits and vegetables, or was it one of those more crazy like, oh, you can't eat any of this and you can only eat this type diet? Right. Well, at the time, I remember that, that Ev wanted me to stay on 20 grams of fat or less. Wow. So, yeah, that's so gross. that's very little. It's very low. If you look it up, if you look at, you know, ingredients on whatever, you, you go, wow, 20 grams of fat or less. So, you know, lot, lots of veggies. Um, in the morning, I had some oatmeal and some eggs. I, I can't remember specifically, but he had it very specific. I had three main meals, and then I had um, three little snacks in between. So it was like, you know, three. Well, like six three meals a day, basically, big, little, in a way. Yeah. 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 Three, three regular meals and then three smaller snackies in between. Mm-hmm. you know just to put that weight on and um yeah but it was a lot of food with a lot of training and uh it was intense and it was different for me because you know i, I personally i i i feel better and i feel like i move better when i'm very very light I, that's what i prefer that's my preference i'm also not used to eating so much imagine doing this every day <laughs> oh man and that was you know, it's, 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 it's funny because like my brother's a lot taller than me. My, my, our, there's three, three brothers, our, our middle brother, he's, he's a lot taller. And so his whole thing is like, I want to gain weight. And for me, I'm always wanting to lose it because less weight I have, it's easier for me to move, sure. you know? Um, so it's just a different idea, but yes, for only the strong with, with, with the, um, the trend of being more muscular and bigger, Sheldon definitely wanted me to put on weight, so I so I did my best, and I think uh, you know I've had me training. I mean, I work out hard anyway, but uh, this this training in particular is for only the strong. Um, Ev wants me to be cut, but not bulky. It looks better on screen. Gets me strong, lean and mean, as yeah. they say. And I had to keep the weight, but still flip <laughs> and do the moves. You know, how how long did it take you to gain those eight to ten pounds? So. 
the thing was I was already, um, you know, for me, for me, I was in um, already in functional shape. Mm -hmm. And then let's see, we started, I got the movie I auditioned in January. I think they hired me officially in February. Okay. And then we were supposed to shoot in July, but because of the hurricane, I, I forgot which, what it was called, which one, which hurricane that was, but because of that, we pushed possibly. until possibly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that sounds familiar. I think Andrew. Uh, so we pushed until October. So I had from February and then we started filming the beginning of October and build a musculature that Sheldon was happy with. Okay, cool. And I like to really go deep in detail, by the way. And I'm really into like lifting weights. If you, and a lot of people want to know this. Now you said you were- I can tell you're in good shape. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I do what I can. Uh, so, you, so you said, okay. Okay, motivated by people like you and Van Dam and Arnold and, you know, those guys. <laughs> but, um, and obviously Stallone, he's one of my favorites too. Okay, so six days a week, night, like say up to 90 minutes of lifting weights. How was the split? 90 like, minutes to two hours. You know? 90 minutes to two hours. How was the actual split as in, were you hitting each body part twice a week? Or was it three times a week or just hitting everything once a week and doing like arms for that long or what? Do you remember? That's a, that's a good question. Um, I remember that we, he switched it up uh, uh, two or three different times, maybe even more. You know, he was a, a professional bodybuilder. So, you know, I trust that he, uh, he looked fantastic. So that was his proof. Sure. Um, that was the proof. Um, but I remember him switching it up uh, a few times, at least, at least. And I can't remember exactly what we did, but we probably did it all in those months <laughs> yeah and it's good to switch it up every few months you know yeah. you got to keep your body guessing get it shot yeah uh so yeah. yeah cool stuff as far as like you said you like to be lighter um especially with all the acrobatics and everything so it sounds like after only the strong you didn't really continue lifting weights anymore the crazy thing was after yeah after only the strong i went to double dragon so this is the thing so not only the strong sheldon wanted me big and then in Double Dragon, I'm supposed to play a 19-year-old, right? So, you know, I, I thought just character-wise, it didn't seem right um, for that character. You know, of course, you know, I, I think in the in the the video game, he's he's more buff. Oh, sure. So I suppose I, you could have gone that route. But I thought at the time I was already 28 years old, and I'm playing like a you know in the script-wise, it was a, a younger guy. So I dropped the eight or 10 pounds, and then um, did a lot of pull-ups, handstands. I went back to more of my, my routine, dropped the weight, and a lot of people thought that maybe I was sick or something. I wasn't sick, I was just preparing for Double Dragon. Like a different role, yeah, different character. Yeah, and then after Double Dragon, I went to Crying Freeman, where Christoph Gons kind of wanted uh, to split the difference. So. So um, yeah, I, I, I changed up my diet and did a different workout for that as well. You know, I, 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 like, I like to change my physicality and looks and everything to the, to the character um, and the martial arts. I want to change the martial arts that fits the character. For me, it's, um, it's character and story first, and then I work from there, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. That's kind of like the approach that Christian Bell would take to the extreme where he went from like the machinist. I think he was like 98 pounds and then he, he played Batman and he was, you know, probably bigger than me. So he went from one extreme to the other based mm. on, on the character, which is quite interesting. Uh, as far as like martial arts training, I wanted to ask you this as well. How long did you uh, continue or did you continue training Capoeira after only the strong? Okay. So after only the strong, um, the good and the bad of it was that <clears throat> I continued working as an actor. The bad of it is that I couldn't make it back to uh, capoeira classes. Mm. So I always try to maintain the basics of doing the jenga and some and you know the, the the cartwheels and some of the meluas, the, some of the kicks. It's the basis for moves like this and this. But in terms of actually going back to class, um, that was the only time that I had a. a you know, a longer period where I could train with uh, a group and with Mestre um, consistently. So, you know, really, I've stayed at my very beginner status. You know, I'm, I'm still very much a beginner uh, in capoeira, but I have even more appreciation 
and love for it now even more wow and i already i already, i always had a lot of it but you know looking looking at the art now and you know me getting older look i'm, I'm 58 now i did that movie when i was 28 it's been 30 years That's and crazy. you know i've traveled the world and i've continued to to work and uh mr amin and i are still very very close friends and i and i'm still his student and i do i occasionally I, i'm able to go in there and and take a class but i have not trained consistently like that since we did the movie which is you know which is sad for me but uh there seems to be a, a nice wave of resurgence of 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 people you know, finding the movie and still talking about it. And I know that there is some very serious talk about us doing a sequel and or a series. And now I'm, um, you know, the older guy, obviously, and I've got a son or a daughter or, you know, um, students, or maybe I've gone back to Capoeira again and, uh, you know, bring some of the, the characters back but there's a lot of interest serious interest uh from people who could actually make it happen you know to to continue on the story so we'll see yeah that would be amazing and then you could finally i know you stayed in contact with master amen this whole time but you could finally go back to his classes right perfect excuse hey we're doing a sequel let's uh <laughs> you train together there was, there was a long there's a glitch there was a long glitch yeah no that seems to be the theme today but we, we, it, it's good enough okay. you know okay. we, we got good I, I could edit all that okay stuff out, so in, in play clips okay. we're only the strong okay. in there obviously but um all right wow that that's exciting <clears throat> So the talk about the potential sequel, did you give any input yourself in this say, hey, I think my character should be doing this now, or were these ideas from, from Louise and Sheldon just kind of like thrust on you, or did you kind of give any input? I think we should go in this direction, guys. So over the years, uh, Louise and I, Mr. Amen, we've been talking about what we could do with it. Um, the wonderful and late Samuel Adida, uh, one of our original producers, um, he was very interested in doing something and then he uh, unfortunately passed away. But, um, you know, the idea has been around for the last 30 years of doing something with it. Yeah. And uh, Louise, our wonderful writer, uh, he gets the credit 100% for contacting the powers that be and uh, spoke with them uh, himself. Oh. And, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a perfect full circle because the original story was based on Louise's real life, you know. I didn't take over neighborhoods. I didn't, you know, there was no chop <laughs> shop. Anybody know where I can buy a hot Mercedes? <laughs> well, they always got to, like, exaggerate a, a few of the details to make the movie more exciting for the audience. You know, sometimes, uh, sometimes you'll listen to other ideas from us, but uh, it's all him. He gets the credit for that. Oh, cool. And he deserves the credit for that. The pressure on us is to do something that will at least be as well received as the original. At least. There's no point in doing only the strong without Mark as the lead. So yeah. we're not even entertaining anybody else. The the issue becomes then what is he what is he confronting this time, 30 mm -hmm. years after the fact? Right? Like now what? what? What are we dealing with? And the logical conclusion seems to be. Let's, end, let's study what could have happened to his students. Seems to be the logical conclusion. Because, yeah. you know, that, that's what the whole film was really about to begin with. It's like, we're helping others, not, you know, building up the Louis Stevens character. It's like, this is supposed to help these students. Yeah. And this kind of circles back to what I said at the beginning. So, not only The Strong did go to the theater, did get a theatrical release in the United States, but I never seen any trailers, never heard of it. It wasn't until that kid at my school mentioned it. And by yeah. that time it was already on video. So let me ask you this. Do you think like the promotion or lack thereof actually affected what happened? That? Yeah. Like if you, if you want to like talk about that whole thing. Absolutely. As far as I understand the executive at 20th century Fox, who was supportive of our movie, uh, it may have been the president back then. I, I, I can't remember if it was executive or the actual president. Um, 
right before the movie was uh, to be shown in the movie theaters, he was no longer the executive in charge or uh, no longer the president. I can't remember, but he wasn't, he wasn't in a place of power anymore to support the movie. Mm -hmm. So um, as far as I understand, the studio did their minimum to satisfy the contract and then moved on to whatever the new regime uh, wanted in terms of their projects, you know? So basically we were the old regime and they didn't want to support that stuff. So they just did the minimum and then moved on and then got their, their new projects going. So it was um, unfortunate timing for us. But the great thing is we did find uh, a, a, an audience, a worldwide audience via, you know, VHS tapes and, uh, you know, reruns on television. And, you know, I'm, 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 I'm so happy and honored to say that almost actually everywhere I go in the world, somebody remembers only the strong, you know, and there are a lot of um, people that because of our movie practiced it. Mm -hmm. Um, or still practice it. So it's, it's uh, you know, it, it, it's very emotional and uh, inspiring. Um, and I feel so, so much gratitude to have been a, a, a part of it. And, you know, I need to thank Louise and Sheldon, of course, for supporting my participation in the movie because they could have had a lot of other actors play it and and they chose me along with our other producers steve macon and Stuart shapiro and you know they um they supported me through the auditioning process you know i, I had to go back in and, and do um, the audition at 20th century fox and this was back when they had 35 millimeter cameras so you know laura albert a good friend and she's a very um prolific successful stunt woman she she read off camera for me for my lines and, and uh, Earl White, my good friend Steve for Earl White, he, uh, he did some of the capoeira with me, you know, for my screen test. Um, even my, my good friend Joan Chen, the actress Joan Chen, came down to the studio and supported me, um, you know, that day for going through the audition process. So, you know, a lot of people involved. And of course, Mr. Men Santo for teaching me anything I know about capoeira was learned by him. And uh, yeah, it was a, a fantastic experience all the way around. You know, all the, the actors and the, it was, it was just wonderful. It was wonderful. Stacy Travis, Jeffrey Lewis, you know, Richard Coco, Ryan Bowman, um, Todd Zussman. Yeah, you were, you was, were surrounded by a lot of great was, acting talent. You were definitely surrounded by a lot of great yes. acting talent. I think you got to give yourself more credit. Yes. You're, you're so humble, Mark. Here, here's the thing. You say they could have chose a lot of other actors. I don't think so. Like, and I'll tell you why. You had the right look. You got the natural charisma. But on top of that, you, again, you said you only trained in Capoeira for a year, but you, the way you move, like you can't just get another actor. You could train them for like three years. They're not going to move like you and it's not going to sell the movie. So... You know, everybody respects how humble you are, and that's a great quality. But I I disagree in the part where you, you think they could have got a lot of other actors. I, I just don't see anybody else who could have played that movie. And if they did, not nearly the way you played it. Thank you, David. Thank you. But, but you do agree, though, you know, in terms of being the producers and director and the writer, you know, it was in their hands. They could have gone oh, definitely. so many different ways. I mean, so... That, that's my point is that they could have they could have chosen a lot of other people they it was in their hands so my gratitude to all those that you know got me there well with mark i really there's really nobody else i could compare him to he's a great looking guy great body very experienced at the martial arts but i think he's a serious actor in a way i think only the strong is actually way more successful than people might realize and I, and i'll tell you why so if you just go strictly by the box office, it didn't it didn't quite perform the way it should have due to various factors and reasons. But there's a lot of movies. Yeah, David, I think I think it was like less less than a week. It was in the movie theaters with no, like you said, with no advertising. You know that that's crazy. Again, I I didn't even hear about it till it was on video. 
uh, you know, word of mouth. And, and this is where I'm going with that. So there are movies that will make a lot of money opening weekend and then just fall off a cliff and nobody revisits them. Now, when you have a movie like Only the Strong that gets picked up from word of mouth and has a cult-like status, that is the real success because, again, look at us talking about it 30 years later. You know? Proof of the success of it. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I like that. As far as like the fight scenes, and I think the the coolest ones were the basketball court, and then of course the end fight with the machetes before you guys lose the machetes. Uh, how how do you think those fight scenes turned out? As far as like from an editing perspective, were you happy with how the fights looked? Yes, um, you know, yeah, I I think I am, especially for for the times. You know, I think. Uh, if we, if we are lucky enough to move forward and do something more with only the strong two or the series, you know, the editing style will differ, will be different now with technology, with certain cuts and sensibility, depending on, you know, whether uh, Sheldon directs again or Louise directs or, you know, depending on that. Uh, but in, in terms of for that time, I think, I think it was good. I do. I, I'm happy with it. You know, the main thing is that does it convey the sensibility of the story and the, and the characters and of the art? And, you know, again, for that time, I think it did. I love those fight scenes, uh, personally. Uh, let me ask you, you this, because I know one thing they'll do nowadays a lot is uh, they'll do a lot of fights like in one take. Now, obviously, you know, guys like you, guys like Scott Atkins, they're very skilled. They could do this choreography in one take. They could do the whole sequence because they're real martial artists who have been training for decades. But as far as like a film goes, do you actually prefer that or do you prefer the more cinematic cut into like really cool angles or do you just like to watch it flow in, in one take? What's your preference? My preference is what is the um, stability and, and see the martial arts and the physicality of it, but does it tell the story? You know, in the end, for me, it always comes down to the storytelling. You know, we go back to, to, to Bruce Lee's fight scenes and he had a lot of storytelling in that. You see his little moments, you know, when he gives looks and, and does things. Um, it's really about that, I think, you know, if it, works, if it works for the story and the sensibility of what you're trying to convey, then do that. If it means longer cuts, Great. I mean, uh, longer sequences, great. If it means shorter sequences, great. You know, what I think is important uh, is that, you know, when you're on the, f when, you're, when, you're, when you're filming the fights, to hopefully have a previs, you know, previsuals, have, you know, and, and this is what a lot of the, um, and, and nowadays what the, what the stunt coordinators and fight choreographers do, is they'll have everything choreographed before they'll have a shot on camera, saves time and energy and less chance of somebody getting hurt by doing things that that's not going to be used in the actual movie anyway you know i think that's a really safe uh pragmatic way of working you know choreograph the fight scenes figure out the shots film it show it to the director get it approved or modified but you you go in um shooting the scene with as much preparation as possible knowing that you know the director may want to try something different and modify this or that, that's fine. But at least for the most part, you have a very strong structure mm -hmm. of, of, of knowing what you're going to do, as opposed to, you know, covering a big master of the fight scene, which is, you know, great if you have months uh, or at least weeks to practice this thing, you know, that the, the whole sequence, you get this master and then you go in for coverage. But a lot of times I feel like, you know, you do all this big master and then, why? Because you know they're not going to use the master for most of it anyway. You know, so I, I, I love the way that, you know, the choreographers and the, and, and the stunt coordinators are working nowadays with previs. And a lot of that is due to technology. We have the technology and iPhones and we can do all that, you know, and the editing systems on the, on the, on the computers. We didn't have access to that technology when we did only the strong way back then, you know. Yeah. But you have it now and um, I think it's great. So uh, back to your question, in the end, I think it really depends on um, the sensibility and what you want to convey in the story. Sometimes the long sequences, the big winners are great, and other times 
the shorter sequences and quick cuts um, are, are great as well for, for that particular story. It depends on what you want to tell. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Perfect answer. Um, let me ask you this, as far as like choreographing the scenes. Uh, the more capoeira-esque uh, fights, um, uh, that was Mestre Amen, first and foremost, because, you know, he's the expert on capoeira, so of course it would be him. And then I had my input and our stunt coordinator. Um, it was a collaborative effort led by Mestre Amen. Oh, cool. And how long did it take to film that basketball sequence? And did you get injured at all? Because that's a pretty rough fight. <laughs> so I'm happy to say that uh, for all of Only the Strong, uh, nobody that I know of got injured, myself included. Oh, nice. So injury free on that whole movie. Oh, good. But how long did it take to, to film? You guys didn't film yes. that basketball scene in one night, did you? As far as I remember, we did. I could be wrong, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that was a one night. That's crazy. No. What, what about the end fight with, with the machetes and then, you know, you guys lose the machetes and then you do that ridiculous. Yeah. I don't remember how long that was. Whether, what, Wow, I don't, I, I can't, I do not know. Was it one night? Possibly. Um, couple nights? I, I, I don't remember. I just remember that once we started the finale sequence of my character, um, I think Richard Coca's character comes into the, the firehouse and I'm doing the kicks. Mm -hmm. And then I think I go out after that. It's been a while since I've seen it, but once we started the night sequence, that was our night shoots. And I, I, can't, I cannot remember how long the actual finale fight took, uh, but I don't think it was more than, if it was more than a day, two or three, but it wasn't yeah. that long. We, we, it wasn't that long. That's crazy, because like you said, you shot the whole opening like in a day, you shot the basketball scene as far as you know in yeah. a day. <laughs> you guys just shot so much, so quick. And, and, and one last question, Mark, I know you gotta go, just one last question. And I think a lot of people would be curious about this, myself included, as, as we all get older, you know, as people age, they kind of lose their physicality. I wanted to ask, because you still move great, you still look great. How's your training these you. days? Like, how long are you training, and can you still do all these moves from only the strong? Ah, okay, great question. Thank you. Um, so the thing is, my my parents are both martial arts teachers. So I have been doing, or I've been physical all of my life. You know, um, so can, uh, so what do I do now? Uh, before I I. For most days, most days before I even walk out of the house, I do a minimum of 15 to 20 minutes of yoga. I have a pull-up bar. I do all my basics before I leave the house. So that takes care of my flexibility and my basic strength moves. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then when I get to the training facility, uh, on the days that I go, I do some light weights. And so I'm, I'm here in, in, in South Africa. I'm very, very excited and thrilled to be a part of the third season of Warrior. You know, based off of Bruce Lee's writings, executive produced by Shannon Lee, his daughter, and uh, Jonathan Tropper. Uh, and and uh, I do a lot of hiking. I love hiking. Uh, for me, it's been um, one of these things that I just I just need to do. That's my 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 you know my um, keeps me a little more grounded and helps with my sanity. You know, it's nature. Every step, you have to be very focused and mindful how you move. Um, you get all the fresh air, you have time to think, you know, so I, 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 I hike, I trail run, keeps me at a good base level of being fit enough to do most things that I'm required to do when I'm on set. Oh, cool. So basically more or less, you could still do what you did in only the strong. I'm not going to say a hundred percent yes, but I think there's a very good chance. Wow. Uh, that's great. <laughs> That's great to hear. I was going to say, a, a couple of years ago, I was doing some standing backflips in our backyard. I was already in my 50s. You know, I'm 58 now, so I must have been, I don't know, 54, 55. And um, 
<laughs> my son Capono, who's now 20 years old, he said, uh, he said, that's not right for a 50-year-old man to do backflips, that I need to stop. <laughs> it was freaking him out. It, it's inspiring. Um, it, it's definitely inspiring because I remember seeing you Thank on you. Iron Chef. And I know you've been on that show for a while, but like some of your intros, you would basically do this gymnastics routine. It's like, wow, he's still moving like he's in college. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, again, Mark, thank you for your time. It's been a real honor. I love getting all the details on these classic films and your career and just your martial arts and, and getting to know you a little better. You're a great person. Everyone I talk to who knows you says you're such an amazing person. And and I'd say that too, after just spending an hour with you, such an amazing, positive force of energy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, David. And, and I hope you continue your training and I really appreciate you having me on your show. Oh, thanks. Thanks for being here.